let's look at some examples how we can write a risk five assembly program here the logic is if b equal to c a equal to b plus 2 left shift c and 5 else the only difference is it has to do right shift and the values a b c they are available in memory so we are going to read the values b and c from the memory and then we are going to calculate the value a and then we are going to write the value back into memory that's what we are going to do so how to write assembly program we need load word so we are going to read the location 8 which is nothing but b and then we are going to put the value in the register x12 source register 1 and we are going to read the location c which is nothing but c and the value will be stored in the register x13 so you need to remember the format load word so here we use x0 because we want to read the locations 8 and c so we don't want to add any value to that that's why we use x0 x0 is nothing but 0 so the address is going to be like 8 plus 0 which is nothing but 8 c plus 0 which is nothing but c and then we perform add operation so for both the expressions i think b plus 2 is common so we try to do b plus 2 which is nothing but x12 and 2 and this is involving constant right so we need to use add i and this is like temporary register x28 which holds b plus 2 now b equal to x12 x13 so if b is same as c then we need to do left shift so if it is true look at here shift left logical and this is the one x28 b plus 2 and x13 which is c so it is going to perform b plus 2 left shift c and the result will be stored in 29 this is again another temporary register. So finally, it's going to calculate the value of A. So that happens through AND I operation. This is the destination register X30 and X29 and 5. Right? So it's going to perform AND operation between X29 and the constant 5. The result will be stored in X30. And whatever the result we need to write back into the memory. So we use store word. This is the register and this is the address. If this is false, then the only difference is it's going to do right shift. So it will be like B plus 2, right shift. And then it will do unconditional jump here. So if it is false, yes, it's going to do PC equal to PC plus 4, which is nothing but the next instruction. Look at this. So it's going to do right shift and then it does this B equal to X0 is always same as X0, right? Because it is 0. then it does unconditional jump end and then even in this case also we have to do and operation and then we need to store the value back into memory so these are all like kind of common instructions this is how you can think of writing an assembly program let's look at this example how to calculate the sum of memory elements here the memory is defined as very log array overall 50 elements and each element of 32 bits wide. So there are 50 elements, memory of 0, memory of 1, memory of 2, and it goes up to 49. Actually, the array starts at the location 4. So it's happening like 4, 8, 12. Also, the memory has other values. At the location 200, it has the starting address of the array, which is nothing but 4. Look at here. And in the location 204, it has the number of elements. So in this case, overall 50 elements, so the value is 50. And then in the location 208, we are going to write the sum. So basically, we are going to calculate the sum of array elements. And then finally, the sum will be written in the location 208. 
and this we need to do through registers. So we are allocating registers like x12 for address of memory and x13 for number of elements and x14 the address of the memory which holds the starting address of the array. Understand this. And then x20 is going to be destination register which will have sum and then finally we are going to write this value back into memory and the location is going to be 208. Now look at this. Load word x12, x0 and x14. So it's like hexa value 0 plus register x14. So x14 as value 200. So it's going to be like 200 plus 0 which is nothing but 200. The address is 200. So look at 200 and it has value 4. Look at this. This 4 will be stored in x12. Right? Then load word x13 4 plus x14 which means x14 as 200, 200 plus 4, it is 204, 204 as the value 50, so 50 will be stored in destination register 13. So 12 as 4, 13 as 50 and add x20, x0, x0. So basically we are initializing this register x20 with 0. So sum is initialized with 0. And then there is a loop. The loop starts with load word. So here x12, x12 is nothing but 4, 4 plus 0, which is 4. So mem of 4, which means this particular element, array of 0, that's what it means, array of 0, that value that element will be stored in x15 and then it does add operation. So here x20 the sum is initialized with 0 so 0 plus array of 0 and that value is stored and then add i x12. So x12 holds the address which will be incremented by 4 because this is like byte addressing. So it has to point to the next location right when the loop continues. So it becomes 8 and then we need to decrement the overall elements. So x13 as number of elements 50, so 50 becomes 49 and then at the end we have to check not equal to. So whether x13 has become 0, no, then the loop continues and in this case it is going to be the next location memory of 1. So it is going to be like memory of 0 plus memory of 1 and then 8 becomes 12 that is how it is going to continue and at the end whatever the sum we get if x13 is going to be 0 eventually it will reach store word and whatever the value we have in x20 we will write the value back into memory and here you look at the location x14 is 200, 200 plus 8 it is going to be 208 this is the offset. 208 and in that location we are going to write the value of x20 which is nothing but sum. This is how it works. I mentioned about multiplication. When it comes to multiplication we have to think of using add and shift operation. So how we do this in Verilog? This is how basically we define the logic. We have the result product and there are operands multiplier and multiplicand. Let us say multiplier and multiplicand are of 16 bits and the product is going to be 32 bits and this is how we define the logic. Whenever any one of the operand changes basically it is going to perform multiplication product the result will be initialized with 0 and then there are overall 16 bits. So 16 bits for the multiplier and multiplicand. So we run the for loop for 16 times and it is going to always check multiplier of i 
1 if this particular bit is high then you do this like product equal to product plus multiplicand left shift i this does multiplication addition and left shift. We can't implement for loop directly when it comes to assembly. So, we need to visualize the logic using while loop. Look at this. So, we define the same logic something like this while i is less than 16, it is going to continue the loop. And the same logic if multiplier that particular bit is i, then it is going to do product equal to product plus multiplicand left shift i. So, when it comes to assembly logic, we need to think like this. So, here the logic is P product equal to basically multiplier into multiplicand. That is what we want to achieve. So, we allocate registers x5 is going to be destination register that is for product x4 for multiplier and x3 for multiplicand. You can't do bit slicing something like this in assembly, it is not possible. So, you have to think of the equivalent logic. So, in this case, we are going to try this. We are going to have value like this. So, there is a register x7 and all 32 bits will be like this, 31 bits 0 and the LSP is going to be 1. So, all zeros only the LSB is going to be 1. So, we are going to shift this 1 every time and then we are going to multiply that value with the multiplier. That is how we are going to check whether that particular bit is high or not. You can try this logic. You may need to do paperwork. So, here if you look at what we do is basically x4 is nothing but multiplier and x7. Look at this. This is how you can check whether that particular bit is high or not. And this is going to shift left every time. So, we perform x4 and x7 and the result will be stored in x9. And then we are going to check whether the x9 is same as x7. If it is going to be same as x7, what that means is that particular bit is high. That is how we can check. And then this is going to be pretty straightforward. Look at this equation x5 equal to x5 plus x3 left shift x8. So, in this case x8 is going to be like i variable. So, we need to increment x8 every time. x8 is equal to x8 plus 1 and then x7 every time we need to do left shift by 1. So, this is going to be like uh, initially LSB then the next bit will be 1. So, this 1 is going to shift continuously every time towards MSB. Look at this, this is how we can write the assembly program. x10 is nothing but loop count, this 16, the maximum value and x7 is initialized with 1. We need all 31 bits 0 and only LSB as 1. So, we are initializing x7 with value 1. It is going to be like 32 tick h0001 and add x8, x0, x0. So, we are also initializing x8. x8 is for loop which will be initialized and this 16 is available in x10. Look at this. And this is like unconditional jump. You can also do that through JAL or you can say b equal to x0, x0 either one works fine. So, if you are going to use x0 here, obviously it is going to be unconditional jump. So, JAL while expression, it comes straight away here and it always checks whether x8 be less than. So, x8 is less than x10. What is the value of x10? The loop count 16. So, whether x8 is less than x10 as of now, yes. So, it goes to loop and then it does AND operation. Here it is straightforward. So, x4 and x7 we are storing it in x9 and then we are checking this condition whether x9 is same as x7. Yes, if it is same then go to multiplication that is this logic right. 
So here we do the shift x3 by x8, the shift because x8 is going to increment 0, 1, 2, 3, right. So x3 by the current value, as of now the value is 0, if it is 1, it will left shift by 1, that's what it does and that value will be stored in the intermediate register x11, this is like kind of new register. And then we do this add operation x5 plus x11, the result will be stored in x5. And then we do unconditional, this is also unconditional jump. If it, it is same, yes, always, always it's going to be same, then it goes here. And then these two things we need to do, right, x8 plus 1 and x7 left shift by 1. And then this also does unconditional jump, so while expression comes and then this checks and then the loop continues. The loop is going to continue until it breaks the expression. So if x8 is going to be greater than x10, then it will go to the next statement. The statement could be like writing the result back to data memory. All right. To summarize, we have seen different types of instructions, R type, register to register instruction. So it involves three registers, two source registers and one destination register. And when I say I type, there could be different instructions, register immediate, it involves immediate constant and load whenever you want to load the value into a register. If you want to read memory, then you have to use load instruction and then JLR jump link register and uh, e call environment call and environment break these are all i type and s type if you want to store the value into memory then you need to use s type and b type branch instructions for the unconditional jumps or conditional jumps you can use b type and j type jump and link and then u type primarily for load upper immediate or add upper immediate. So these are all the instruction types we have seen. And overall, we have got close to 39 instructions as part of RV32I, risk 5 32 bits integer instructions. R type, I type, S type, B type, J type and U type. So overall there are 39 instructions, 39 instructions for RV32I, RISC-5, 32 bits integer instructions. So what next? We are going to implement RTL design for RV32I, RISC-5 processor, something like this. And this is the kind of architecture we are going to create. So we are going to discuss how to create this RTL design architecture from the ISE. For that, you need to be familiar with all the instructions we have seen, what are the various types and overall all the instructions, 39 instructions, how they work, the functionality. Then we need to understand how to apply digital electronics concepts to create various components like program counter or decoder or register file or arithmetic logic unit or multiplexers or kind of control logic. Control logic could be finite state machine and there could be different memories like instruction memory and data memory. How to create all these components and then finally how to put all the components together to realize a processor. That's what we are going to discuss as part of RTL design module. All right. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you.